Hey there everybody, it's Cheyenne aka Arsenic Cupcakes. So, one of my favorite things to do in the entire world is cosplay because it combines a lot of my favorite stuff. I get to be nerdy, I get to sew, I get to do some character acting, and I get to do a lot of obsessive research. So I just got my passes for Kamikaze this year, which is going to be in California from is going to be in California from October 31st till November 2nd, I believe. So if you're there, you should come, say hi. It's going to be a blast. Last year's was super fun. I took a picture with Bruce Campbell, and my brain melted, and it was amazing. And I'm excited. Um, so I'm just starting to plan out my costumes for that for this year, and, and I thought it would be fun to kind of document my process. So come. Come with me on this journey and maybe I can, you know, maybe some of you guys can learn some stuff from it, learn some tips, learn some things. Maybe you can just laugh at my pain as I cry because I have to do things that are going to be hard. But either way, we'll see how it goes. So today we're going to talk about what I think is one of the most important parts of cosplay and that is doing your research and doing the design work. Now I know what you're thinking. If it's already a pre-existing character, why do you have to design anything? The design is already there. And you're right, but you're also not um, because it's about how you choose to interpret the design and that's something that is where you really get to take the chance to be really creative and have a lot of fun with it, which is probably my favorite part. Okay. All right, so I'm going to be doing Princess Jasmine from the film Aladdin as one of my cosplays, and it's gonna be the one that we're going to document the process of, because I haven't decided on the other ones yet. It depends on the guests and which of my friends is going and stuff like that. Right? Just so you know, in case you're curious, at the moment the contenders are empowered, Eartha Kitt Catwoman, um, and a 50s bombshell version of Starfire, and then I might just wear regular Starfire. So if you have an opinion, let me know. But the costume that we're gonna focus on is Princess Jasmine. So how do you go about doing the research? Step one, find as many pictures of your character as you can. If you're doing an animated character like I am, see if you can find their model sheets, the turnarounds. I don't know how well you can see that, but I'll do like a camera shot of them. These are going to be invaluable to you because they're going to help you see the costume from every angle. They're going to help you figure out the proportions of things because if you can say, well, this is how tall I am and this is how long her wig hits on her. This is how long the hair needs to be on me. Um, these are invaluable. If you can find them in color, they're even better. Um, I could not find any in color for Jasmine, but that's okay because I found tons and tons and tons of pictures. I've only printed out a couple to show you, um, but I have literally like 700 pictures of Jasmine on my computer. It's ridiculous. And then I also have, again, as many of these model sheets or expression sheets as you can find. Um, I got this one that was specifically her hair because I'm gonna have to do this wig and I'm terrified of it and you guys need to pray for me because I have no idea how I'm gonna do that yet but we'll get there now if you're doing a character like Jasmine that has live-action incarnations those are something that you definitely can use to your advantage so if you are doing a Disney character in particular you want to look at their face character from Disneyland I have tons and tons of pictures of all the different incarnations because a lot of face characters will have more than one costume. They'll have the costume they wear in the parks, they'll have the costume they wear in this parade and the costume they wear in that parade and different parks do different versions like for some reason Tokyo Disneyland they have the coolest costumes and I feel like it's really unfair and I really want to go to Tokyo Disneyland now and one thing that I thought was really helpful for me is I was able to look at them and look at the different elements and decide I like this part of this and I like this part of that and I have a thousand of this wig because I'm trying to figure out how the heck this wig is made. Um, right now I'm leaning towards wrapping styrofoam in there and well, but we'll get to that again. We're not talking about wigs yet. No, we're not talking about wigs yet. That's, a, that's another day. But you want to find as many pictures as you can if you're not doing a character that has 
some sort of official live action incarnation like a face character you might want to look at what other cosplayers have done now don't just copy somebody else's costume but you might want to look at how did this person do this how did this person do that what proportions did they choose to use what fabrics did they choose to use just so it can help you get ideas and it can help you come up with what you want to do for yours um i feel like that's really helpful basically just amass 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 as many pictures as you can so once you've got all your pictures um and you feel like you have a good understanding of what the costume is then comes part two for me which is doing design work so you have to decide how faithful to the costume am i going to be how literal to the costume am i going to be um am i going to just do it straight and cartoony like for jasmine in the film the, the animated version of her her outfit is just blue which is lovely but it's not particularly interesting either you know um so do you want to make it more ornate do you want to do a more historical version of it if you have stuff about your body that you might want to take into account that's something to think about as well like i have a tattoo on my stomach um, so I'm trying to decide do I want to raise up the top of her pants to cover that some um, When I did Starfire I tried to account for the fact that Starfire is very tall and very thin and has very a flatter chest and I'm short and curvy So it's at least something to think about in terms of what's going to make you look the best and feel the most comfortable um at the end of the day, it's really all about what you're gonna be happy in. And then from there, for me, I do a lot of sketches. Um, this is the very first sheet of sketches that I did for Jasmine. I don't know how well you can see that. But this is the very first round of sketches that I did. I knew I wanted to do something with embroidery and stones because she's a princess. So you have to go sparkly or go home as far as I'm concerned. So another thing that you might want to consider are any themes from the film or any themes from your character, any motifs you want to incorporate. Um, with Jasmine, she has this running motif throughout the film of birds and being a caged bird and being in like this gilded cage. So that's something that I wanted to incorporate into my design. And I really like embroidery, so I was like, well, I'll do some embroidery on it and I can, you know, kind of try and figure out a way to do this cage motif for birds or something. And you want to do cultural research when you can. Agrabah isn't a real place. However, I know that it's based on a lot of Indian, <clears throat> a lot of Indian and Middle Eastern places kind of mushed together into like Middle Eastern land, which, the, which we can discuss in depth at another point. Um, so I looked at some Arabic embroidery, I looked at some Indian embroidery, I looked at Indian architecture because I know for a fact that that's something that they looked at a lot in the film. They make references to the Taj Mahal, the commentary track. Um, and I also looked at henna designs, all of the individual pieces of that because I just think they're beautiful and that's something I wanted to incorporate. Um, and then just draw and draw and draw until you come up with a design that you like and tweak it. Like the first one I did was very, very complex and, and very ornate to the point that I would have given myself arthritis more than I already am going to. And then I tried different versions and different versions and different versions. And eventually I settled on this one down at the bottom here for the pants where it's got birds and birds flying away and it's all going to be gold and it's going to be very pretty and very ornate and I'm going to put a ton of stones on it um, because this is the outfit that she's wearing when she's being presented to suitors so I feel like they would want her to be like the most gorgeous you know bird of paradise like you know bride on top of the cake kind of thing so plus I like sparkles so it's gonna have lots of stones um, and then I ended up doing a color rendering as well because that helps me. I'm very color oriented with stuff like this. You don't necessarily have to do a big watercolor piece like I did. You can just do stuff with, um, you can just do stuff with colored pencils, crayons, you know, whatever works for you. But just get it to the point where you can visualize the entire costume and everything that you want to do to it. And I feel like this is really important because it's going to make all the other steps way easier. Because I know exactly what I want to create. I know 
how much time I'm going to have to schedule out. I'm doing a lot of embroidery, so I need to make sure that I start this now as opposed to the beginning of November when I'll be sewing and crying and trying to finish it in time. I know what I want when I'm going fabric shopping. I know this is the color I want, these are the accents I want, I need fabric that I can embroider on, how am I going to do the embroidery, am I going to do them as patches, am I going to do it straight onto the pant fabric, what am I going to do with that, I know I need a ton of stones because I want a ton of stones, um, and it's just going to make the entire process easier because then I have stuff to refer to, I have stuff to look back on, I have ways to communicate this to other people if I need their help with parts of it. Um, research is just super important and for me I feel like it's the really fun part because this is the part where you get to show your own creativity with it you get to put your own spin on a character because there are going to be a lot of people that are going to decide to cosplay a character but nobody else is ever going to cosplay them the exact way that you're going to cosplay them and I think that's pretty cool do you think that I can pull Jasmine off? Do you have any questions about my costume? Do you have any particular suggestions? If so, leave a comment below and subscribe so that you can follow me on this journey of Disney and sparkles and probably tears over wigs. Um, I also will be posting stuff on my Tumblr and my Instagram. Um, Tumblr is just arsenic cupcakes. Instagram is princess arsenic cupcakes because the regular one was taken. Um, I also have a cosplay page now, which is Arsenic Cupcakes Cosplay. So you should go and like that too. I would be happy if you did. Yeah. Go look at my other cosplays there. Um, probably it's mostly Starfire right now. And I'm thinking about doing an Ask Starfire video. So if you have any questions for Starfire as opposed to me, put those down in the comments as well. All right. Well, I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks when I'm ready to go and start buying my fabric.